And we're live. Hey, everybody. We are talking about scratch building tools, techniques, materials, taking your comments and questions on Ron's Trains and Things live right now. I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things. I want to welcome you to this live edition of Ron's Trains and Things. And if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so that you can catch future videos. Now that we got the technical business out of the way, I am glad that you're here. Welcome to uh, this edition, uh, live edition of Ron's Trains and Things. Uh, those of you who keep up uh, know that I, I try to do a live stream about once a month. I uh, didn't have a November live stream. You know, the holidays come along, things get a little bit busy and uh, wasn't able to, to get that live stream in. And December is probably going to be the same way. So this is kind of our November, December edition of Ron's Trains and Things Live. And so I uh, want to, uh, to uh, just visit a little bit tonight about the subject of scratch building, something that's kind of on my mind. And if you've been watching my videos, you know why. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to uh, say uh, a couple of house cleaning kind of things. First of all, uh, I want to, you to notice uh, the guys in the chat tonight with the wrenches. Uh, they are my mod squad. Now, I've got the best set of moderators in all of YouTube, and I am very grateful for them. Uh, Steve Brown over at It's My Railroad, Joe G, uh, Eric at IMRRO.com, and Stephen Atwell at Midwest Model Railroad. Appreciate you guys. And uh, they may not all be in now, but uh, I know some of them are, and the rest of them I'm sure will be in uh, will be in uh, uh, the, the, this evening. So uh, be sure and thank them. Behave yourself because they will uh, they will make sure that you do. But who is going to moderate the moderators? That's the real question, isn't it? Um, and just uh, as we get started, I want to go over to chat and say hello to to a few folks. Uh, uh, John at JC's Rip Track. Good to see you tonight, John. Glad that you made it in. Uh, Drew's Trains. How are you tonight? Glad that you're here. Jeff at uh, EJ and E. Jeff. Uh, glad to see you here this evening. Uh, Trainiac. Glad that that you could make it. Uh, and uh, JT JT One. Good to, good to see you tonight. Glad that you guys uh, could make it in. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about scratch building, and uh, you'll notice I'm not in my usual location tonight. Uh, I'm at my workbench, and my workbench area is always cluttered because there's always a lot going on here, uh, so I don't usually film from here, but uh, tonight I uh, wanted to come to the workbench because I wanted to be able to get a hold of some tools and some different things to, to show you and to talk about, and in fact, a good part of tonight's show, uh, I'm going to have the cameras down uh, right on the workbench so that you can... Uh, uh, see what we're talking about. And I'm going to show you uh, just a few scratch build projects that I have done over time. And I uh, also want to hear from you tonight. I want to hear about techniques that uh, that you like to use, materials that you like to use in scratch building or kit bashing, I think fits in well with our topic tonight as well. And I want to, so I want to hear you know those things from you and any questions that you have. Uh, as you know, I'm in the middle of a scratch build right now. As I'm building Victory Blue, I had the first edition uh, of that series last week, and hopefully <laughs> the second second in that series is be, will be up tomorrow. As I'm working uh, frantically uh, around this live stream, trying to get that uh, that video up and and ready, um, we're going to go to to chat here for just a moment and uh, see kind of what's going on over here. Uh, Eric, good to see you. Uh, glad that you're here. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to answer that question that you ask about people with wrenches tools. Uh, somebody else will have to answer that. Um, here's Q138. Hi, guys. I'm super new to weathering HO scale rolling stock. Uh, thank you all for the knowledge. Uh, you're able to pass along. One day I'll build my first layout. We hope you do, Q. And uh, glad that you're here tonight. Uh, tonight, we're not going to talk about weathering, but I do have some ch videos on the channel about weathering. And uh, there's some other great videos uh, out there as well, especially I, I would point you tonight in the chat to uh, JC's uh, Rip Track. 
John Crowdis, who's doing some great weathering videos uh, right now. Well, I'm going to go ahead and turn uh, my camera down to the workbench, and I'm going to start off tonight by showing you just a few scratch build projects that, that I have done over the years. Uh, these are specifically some small ones because they were easy to, to bring off of the layout and in here. Most of them, if you've watched my videos, you have seen at some point, though you may not have really realized what you're looking at. So, so uh, I'm going to turn the camera down now and, and let you see uh, what's going on down here on the workbench. Um, going to try to zoom in just a little bit here. If I can get the technology to work, that's always the kicker, isn't it? Uh, there we go. That's a little bit better, I think. Okay. Um, all right. Let me let me show you a couple of, of, of scratch build projects that I have on the uh, on the workbench this evening. And uh, just to show you some of the work that I've done, uh, this structure that I've got right here, I I'm going to show you. This was the very first scratch build project that I ever did. Uh, this would have been in about uh, 2001, uh, somewhere in that vicinity. And, um, and this project was, I, I built it as a, a feed store. Uh, it was part of a, a grain elevator complex. And, um, I was pretty proud of this structure. I designed it myself. It's a simple structure, so the design wasn't wasn't too much. And it, it leaves some things to be desired. But the thing I'm most proud of, if you can see the windows and doors in this particular structure, those are all stick framed out of in scale scale lumber. Those are made with scale uh, two by fours, basically, and um, uh, stick framed all of the the, the sills. And, and, and the, the door frames as well. Uh, you can see here, it's got kind of a, an office area down below and a raised a small warehouse facility. Uh, you see this uh, large dock on the front. The other side, of course, was track side and had some loading doors. Now, this is one of the things, if I was doing this again, I would change. I'd put in two doors and, and not three, or maybe even just one small structure like this would not have needed three doors. But uh, anyway, uh, I show you this just to show you that if you've not done any scratch building, uh, the best way to learn how to scratch build is uh, just to jump in and, and give it a try. Uh, what's the worst that can happen? You mess up and you, you, you try it again. Uh, but you know, what's the, what's the harm in that? You've learned something along the way. Uh, so I would say, yeah, you know, learn what you can, but, but just give it a try and uh, see what you can figure out. That's what I did here. And again, some things came out really, really good on this little structure. Some things not so good. Uh, this structure is not on my layout at this time. And uh, there's some other things about this structure I'm going to show you a little bit later. Uh, another structure that I built, also one of my very early ones, and you've seen this, whether you've paid much attention to it or not. And it's actually kind of in two pieces here. Uh, this structure here is the yard office and tower at, at North Yard. And this is modeled based on the actual uh, yard tower and office at North Yard in Saginaw, Texas. I uh, lived in the area, have tons of photographs of this structure from, from different angles. And so, uh, you know, obviously there was not going to be anything quite like this on the market, especially in N scale. So I just scratch built this. In fact, I actually scratch built this structure before I ever even started building my layout that included North Yard. Uh, I knew that that was something I was going to be doing someday, and so I just I just sat down and uh, and started started building this. Uh, it, it's intentionally two pieces that just makes it a little easier uh, when we put it on the layout. Uh, but you see the yard tower. There's there's even uh, I don't know if you can see it. There's a there's a guy in there who's uh, who's operating uh, the yard tower and manning it. Uh, we've got you know doors and and uh, a little a little second floor porch. Uh, up here at the tower, and of course, a uh, little lean-to that's actually there on, on the end here, and, and uh, entrance doors and some windows on the back. Uh, it, it was a fun structure. It was an interesting structure, uh, and uh, not, again, not overly complicated, but, but a fun structure to build, and, and it came out really well. Um, I said that, you know, 
similar to the subject of, of scratch building, of course, is, is, is kit bashing. And we can do a lot and have a lot of fun kit bashing as well. Uh, this little structure here was something that I literally sat down and did in an evening when I was bored. And every piece of this uh, little strip mall uh, was something that I just picked out of my scrap box. It was already in the scrap box. And I just picked them out and cut them up and and built this little structure. The the the, the brick along the bottom is actually some of the the low uh, the the dock side brick that you get from uh, DPM modular uh, pieces. Uh, the the siding with the windows all the way around uh, was some pieces that were left from. Um, a, a, a Walters kit, the a Walton Lumber Company. And if you're familiar with that kit, you know, you can build it as a single structure uh, that you can uh, pull freight cars through and unload inside with, with lumber uh, uh, facilities on each side, or you can build them as two separate open structures. And I chose to build them as open structures. They're on the, the layout, as a matter of fact. So some of the pieces that you didn't use in that kit were these pieces uh, of siding with the window. So I, I pulled them from that. This roof is is from some other kit that uh, uh, that I didn't uh, just didn't use for whatever reason. And then just some scrap styrene along the back. And, uh, you know, it, it's not a fancy building, but, you know, back in the background uh, for, for a filler structure, uh, not a bad little structure. Now, if you've been watching my channel from the beginning, you're, you're familiar with this last one that I'm going to show you because this is where my channel actually started. And, um, and this is Baron Brothers Farm and Garden in Bowie, Texas. And of course, this is the structure that I built for uh, Eric Hall's down in, um, I started to say down in Dirty Weathering Contest, uh, the Big Build Contest version two, uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, and um, uh, had a lot of fun building this. This was something I needed for my layout. This is a small structure. Of course, it's it's truncated some from the actual structure, uh, but not a lot. The actual structure is small, but it is rail served as it receives sacked uh, livestock feed uh, by boxcar. And of course, the back, you see where it's track side and we got the, the freight door where uh, things are loaded, uh, loaded in and loaded out. Uh, so those are just some examples of some small, simple projects that that I have built over time uh, through scratch building, and uh, and they really fill in nicely on my layout, and they they serve important purposes. Uh, sometimes you just can't find the structure that you need, or you might find something that's kind of similar. Uh, but it's really not quite, you know, what you want for your layout to represent. Uh, particular prototype structure, or even if it's not prototype, just the kind of structure that you need. And so, you know, the best way to get that structure that you're looking for is to either scratch build it or find something that's similar and, and kit bash it. So I'm interested to hear some of uh, your experiences with kit bashing or with uh, scratch building, uh, or maybe some of the, some questions that you might have about uh, uh, about the, the subject that uh, that we might be able to help you with. And we're going to talk a little bit about some tools and things here in, uh, in just a few moments. Uh, I'm going to go back over here to the chat for just a second. Hello, Roy, man 68. Good to see you tonight. Glad that, uh, glad that you made it in. Um, can't see the guy inside the little window. Well, it's probably a little dark in there. Uh, sorry about that. But tr trust me, uh, he's there. Um, Bruce Giroux, good to see you tonight. Um, let's see here. Um, lots of comments about the moderators and their, and their wrenches. Um, bah, 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 bah. here's Dwayne Ernest love scratch building. Get tired of seeing the same thing everywhere. I, I so agree, Ernest. And, and, um, or Dwight, I'm sorry, that's your last name, Dwight. Um, of course, you know I've got a, a, you know some kits on my layout. I've got several of the DPM kind of downtown kits uh, that I you know have. Some of them are modified. Some of them are just stock the way they come. Uh, and uh, but but you're right. I, I don't want to just repeat them over and over. And if people visit a lot of layouts, you see those same kits over and over again. Uh, so you, you need to add something to them if you want to get some variety uh, on your layout. Um, here's a question from John, is it Fedlum, I think? 
Um, what's a good plastic to use for scratch building larger structures? John, what I do myself is I do everything in styrene uh, just because I like working with styrene. Now, if you want uh, something that's very large and you need uh, something that's a little extra rigid, uh, your, your other option there is, is really ABS plastic, which is uh, a little sturdier. It's a little more rigid than styrene is. And so it, it, it is good if you want to use it to melt a frame. Uh, styrene, in my opinion, gets a little better detail and there's a lot more available as far as shaped uh, sheets uh, in styrene. So you can always build uh, you know, a frame or a basic structure with ABS and then uh, use styrene to, to cover it and to do the detail work. Uh, again, I'm working in N scale, so, so I rarely get something so large that I can't just build it in, in styrene, and uh, I find styrene easier to work with. Um, and since we're talking about that, let's talk a little bit about adhesives, um, because if you're working with styrene and, and styrene alone, uh, some adhesives are going to be... Uh, what you're going to, to, to tend to want to use. If you're using ABS, using, you know, plastics together, uh, you may want to use something a little different. I highly recommend some type of a solvent cement. When I first started model railroading, all anybody ever seemed to talk about in the, the hobby prep was building with, with CA, uh, with super glue. And I built a lot of structures with CA. This structure that I showed you earlier uh, that was my first scratch build. This was built entirely with CA. Uh, CA has one primary problem. It, it, it's, it, it, it will glue the pieces together. It will hold them together. And if you can be very, very neat with it and keep it off the surface of the model, you can make a clean looking model. But look, you see what's happening right here? What happens over time is that CA becomes very brittle. And in those joints, that brittle uh, uh, little layer of CA that holds the joints together is between them uh, becomes uh, begins to break down because it becomes brittle. And literally, uh, this is just one of several structures that I built early in my modeling career with CA that are just falling apart. I, I need to go back and, and repair this and several others with some solvent cement. Uh, a solvent cement won't do that because literally a solvent cement uh, melts the edges of the plastic and literally literally welds them together, literally bonds the plastic and melts it together into one piece. Uh, there are lots of different kinds of solvent cement out there. For years, people used a 10X uh, which was uh, a, an excellent brand of solvent cement uh, that I don't believe is available anymore. Uh, one of the ones that I used for a long time and still do when I can find it is called Ambroid Pro Weld. Uh, I really like I really like it. A uh, Micromark makes a, a solvent cement that uh, is literally called the same stuff because it's the same stuff. <laughs> uh, this is a good solvent cement. Right now I'm using this bottle uh, that I got uh, from Flexifile. Uh, these are the same people that make the touch and flow applicator. In fact, this came with my touch and flow applicator and I've had good luck with it. Uh, Plastruct also makes uh, some, some solvent cement. And I want to say a word about the Plastruct. This is kind of where I started. Uh, you'll notice this Plastruct solvent has an orange label. There is also a, a version of Plastruct uh, solvent that has a white label. And there's an important difference. The white label is uh, a solvent that is made specifically for welding styrene to styrene. And it works very well for that. And I recommend it if you're going to use Plastruct uh, solvent strictly with styrene, I would recommend the, the white label. This in the orange label that they call plastic weld is actually made for bond, bond uh, bonding different types of plastics together. You'll notice if you I don't know if you can read it, but uh, it literally says right on the label uh, that you can use it for uh, ABS, styrene, butane, acrylic, uh, and it's for using dissimilar plastics. Or uh, if you're working with ABS, this is the, the stuff that you want to use. This works fantastic with ABS plastic. So I, I, I highly recommend this if you're working with ABS uh, to get some added strength. And I definitely recommend a solvent cement if you're doing any scratch building with plastic. Uh, 
back to the chat for just a moment. Uh, JT1 says, MEK uh, is illegal in California. Uh, I assume somebody uh, up uh, higher has, has talked about MEK as a solvent cement, and that is something a lot of people have used for a long time. Uh, if you read the labels of these carefully, you're going to find that these actually are MEK-based. Uh, most of these have MEK in them. They're they're not full strength MEK. MEK is harder to 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 find today than it used to be, uh, and it it was an, an excellent solvent, but uh, but harder to find. And, and like you said, in, in some places maybe illegal altogether uh, to 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 buy and to use. Um, Sparky one hundred seven one hundred seven says canopy glue for windows uh, when it comes to buildings. That is a great. A great thought, Sparky. This is the reason why I'm doing this stream for my from my workbench. Uh, canopy glue is fantastic stuff for lots of different applications, and gluing windows in is one of them. Uh, if you're not familiar with canopy glue, this is uh, it's not altogether different than like a white glue, um, uh, except it's much much thicker, and it. it depending on the brand that you get, uh, some of it will actually remain tacky. Uh, this that I have here, which is RC Modeler's Craft Glue, this is a, a canopy glue, and this is a very thick, it's got a squeeze bottle, but you cannot squeeze this out of the bottle. I'll open it up and kind of, I'm going to kind of squeeze it up here just so you can see just how thick that is. Um, literally, when I use this, I get a toothpick and dab it on whatever I'm using it for. Uh, one of the things I really like this particular uh, uh, canopy glue for is putting um, uh, um, figures. I, <laughs> I can't talk. I like figures or vehicles on my layout. I want them to stay in place, but at some point in the future, I might want to move them. And this remains uh, just tacky enough that it will hold that figure or that vehicle in place, but I can take it off and it remains tacky and it'll come right off. It works really good for that. Uh, this is a Zap Canopy Glue uh, Formula 560. And if any of you all watch um, uh, Jerry Leone, who's on uh, MRVP, or if you watch his channel on YouTube, uh, this is his favorite kind of, of can canopy glue, and he's the reason why I tried some of this. This uh, dries a, a little harder, a little firmer, uh, but still works really, really well. The reason canopy glue, as Sparky was saying, is great for windows is because a, a solvent, uh, when you put it in capillary action, is going to bleed it out onto the window. It's going to turn your window frosty. CA, uh, if you get more than just the tiniest drop on the edge of a window, it's going to bleed out onto the window and it's going to make the window look, you know, not right. Uh, just a spot of canopy glue out along the edges will hold that window in place without getting out and frosting the, the, the window and, and ruining the effect of, of your window. So yeah, there are lots of good applications for canopy glue and I, uh, I, I, I recommend it. Something that's similar that I'll show you also is a, it's a tacky glue. This is Aline's tacky glue. And this is fantastic for a lot of uh, scenery building materials. If you watched me make my trees, deciduous trees from sagebrush, you saw me use this, uh, gluing the, uh, the pieces of sea foam onto the sagebrush itself, because this is a, it's a slow drying glue. It's, it's, it's sticky and tacky. Uh, it eventually dries, you know, very firm, but but it remains, uh, you know, somewhat um, somewhat pliant, and so it's very forgiving that way. It works great for that. Uh, Trainiac uh, says, uh, "What do you think of Mod Podge?" I personally think it's amazing for almost everything. Uh, that is a question I'll answer right now. Do -do 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 -do. Mod Podge. Uh, this is this is Matt uh, Mod Podge. If you buy Mod Podge, read the label carefully because not all Mod Podge is created equal. Uh, you're going to want Matt Mod Podge in most instances uh, because you don't want it shiny. They also have a gloss version. This is a, a, an artist medium. Uh, Mod Podge is a, a, a great adhesive for a lot of things. Uh, there are some things that people use it for that I don't, and that's not because I don't think it's good. It's just because I'm not in the habit of doing it. For years, Mod Podge or Matte Medium was used as scenic glue. Uh, in fact, a lot of people still do. 
Uh, a lot of people now have gone to Woodland Scenics, Scenic Cement, but guess what? Scenic Cement is just diluted matte medium. It's basically the same thing as this. Uh, and so you can take Mod Podge. Uh, when you buy this stuff, it is pretty thick, uh, as you can see there. Um, quite thick, uh, thicker than, than Elmer's glue or, you know, or white glue, uh, but you dilute it with water and how much you dilute it, you know, depends on who you ask. I've heard, you know, one to one or one to two or one to three, depending on what you want to do. Makes it makes a really good, uh, uh scenery, uh, adhesive. Uh, I use Mod Podge a lot whenever I'm, I'm making trees for, um, the sagebrush trees, you, if you watched that video, you saw I used Mod Podge to coat the sagebrush to glue the, that kind of barky material that's on the surface of the sagebrush down. Uh, otherwise, it's just stringy and doesn't look natural. That way, you're not pulling it off. gives a nice bark look. Lots of great applications for, for Mod, Podge, Mod Podge, especially for scenery. So a, a great scenery, uh, great scenery adhesive. Um there was one other I was going to show you. And I don't seem to see my bottle of Hobby Tack. Woodland Scenics makes a, a tacky glue uh, called Hobby Tack, which is really good for putting foliage on trees because uh, you put it on, you let it dry, and it never fully dries. It will stay literally sticky for years. Uh, and the reasons that's that's good is because some adhesives, when you're putting foliage on a tree, uh, over time those adhesives they they dry out, they get brittle, and the adhe the foliage will begin to fall off. Uh, Woodland Scenics Hobby Tack won't do that; it will remain sticky for uh, I think forever. So it is a a, a great adhesive and a great uh, great option for that. Um, are there any adhesive? things that we haven't talked about uh I'll, I'll mention one more as soon as i can pull the right can off the shelf here and you know there's four cans and naturally the one i want is the last one that i grab one other thing you you've seen me do some modeling over time with uh, with acrylic or or plexiglass and if you're going to uh, uh, adhere plexiglass to itself, the best option is acetone. Uh, acetone uh, works very much like the solvent cement does with, with other plastics. Uh, the acetone will, will weld acrylic or, or plexiglass to itself. And if you watched those videos, oh, it's been close to a year ago that I made uh, in making some uh, some skyscrapers out of plexiglass and you saw that that i tried gluing the plexiglass plexiglass together with with silicone uh, because i had seen that done uh, didn't work at all and when i tried to paint it the paint attacked the silicone and it completely fell apart uh, the acetone is the way to go if you're working with acrylic and uh, trying to adhere a, a acrylic together back over to the chat for a minute i know i'm not getting all of your comments and questions, and I'm, I'm, I apologize for that, but we're going to get as many as we can as we go through the course of the evening. Uh, John at JC's Rip Track says, love Mod Podge for my scenery stuff. A mix of Mod Podge and water and a bit of dish soap. Yes, uh, kind of like the wet water uh, thing to break surface tension, and uh, it works really, 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 really well. Um, DIY and Digital Railroad. Have you seen Luke Towan use Mod Podge for water ripples? Uh, I have seen that, and that is one of the few instances when you might want to use a glossy Mod Podge instead of the matte medium, uh, because those water ripples will, will still tend to have uh, you know some some shininess and some reflectivity to it, and so uh, so yeah, you can do that. But I, I believe he uses a, a, a glossy version of Mod Podge. Um, let's see. Uh, here's Robert Lewis who says, what about weld bond glue? Uh, use a, uh, use a lot to glue down. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about there, but as far as weld bond is concerned, uh, I have some weld bond. Uh, do I have it handy? Well, that is the question. <laughs> um, 
Anyway, weld bond is an adhesive that comes in a tube and uh, it's more of a chemical based adhesive. Uh, I have, uh, I don't use weld bond typically. Uh, and that's not because it's not good. Um, it's just because I haven't been in the habit. I haven't experimented with it a lot, but I'll tell you one area where I have used it. It's highly recommended in this area. And so I purchased some just to use for that. And that is, uh, I have built a few of, of my own turnouts there. None of them are on my layout right now. Uh, but I, uh, fast tracks, uh, jigs and, uh, and mills and their, and their, their quick sticks, uh, to build some, some custom turnouts. And these are great. I'm going to do some videos on these one of these days, uh, whenever I actually get to building some and using them, uh, on uh, a switching layout, but they recommend weld bond when it comes to gluing the rails onto the quick sticks. Uh, weld bond is an excellent adhesive for gluing dissimilar materials together. And, you know, I want to come back and say a word about CA because I said something about earlier about CA, about not using CA when you're scratch building with styrene. Uh, CA has, it, it's really, uh, it's best use is when you're gluing dissimilar materials together. Uh, it's not a good option for gluing plastic to plastic for the reason that I mentioned. But if you're gluing a porous material to a non-porous material, CA is ideal for that because it will penetrate the porous material just enough to hold it and can also grip to the non-porous. So if you're gluing wood, for instance, to metal, or if you're gluing uh, ceramic to metal, or even wood to ceramic, and those kinds of dissimilar kinds kinds of materials, uh, CA is a great option to use. Uh, and again, weld bond, uh, I, I, I'm not overly familiar with it. I've not used it a lot, but they recommend it for this application and it works really, really well for this. Again, gluing dissimilar materials together. Okay. Um, John says, looking forward to seeing the fast track, uh, tutorial videos. You're a brave, braver man than I am. Uh, well, we'll we'll see how that turns out. Well, <laughs> we'll 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 come back to that subject uh, sometime in the in the future. Um, William Sullivan, plan on doing some scratch builds for my layout, military base layout. That sounds really interesting, so, uh, William. And I'm glad to hear that you're going to be doing some scratch building. Uh, Stu structures, I like epoxy for dissimilar materials. Uh, Good to see you, by the way, Mark, uh, Stu Structures. Um, yeah, a lot of people have used epoxy for a lot of uh, a lot of uh, those kinds of applications. I, I use epoxy sometimes uh, for larger applications. It, it, it's harder for me to be really precise with epoxy when I'm doing something that's fine and delicate. Uh, but uh, for for larger items, um, I, I, I use epoxy sometimes. I have. Uh, well, we'll come back to that subject a little later. I, I used to really dislike messing with epoxy because you you, you had you know the, the different bottles and you had to measure and pour and try to get them just right and it was it was it was just a mess. Uh, now you can buy epoxy and these little double syringe type of of tubes where literally you just push down on on this syringe and it puts out both the the epoxy and the hardener in in the right amounts into whatever you're going to stir it up in and it's a lot easier to to use and to apply now than it used to be so i find myself using epoxy more now than i ever did before um and again john says epoxy is the we don't mess around glue <laughs> that's a good way of putting that but it's pretty thick uh, I used it on my larger model rockets. Yeah, I, I'm the same way, John. I use it on on larger items. Uh, I find it harder to use on on really delicate stuff. Um, okay, I, let's talk. I said we were going to talk a little bit about materials. Now I've talked some about plastic, and and I'm going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, I talked about styrene uh, just a little bit, and if you've watched my videos, you know that I work a lot with with styrene modeling with styrene. Uh, I'm curious to know how many of you all have done much scratch building with wood, either basswood or, or balsa wood. Uh, I, I've not done a lot of that myself. It's not that I don't like working with wood. In fact, I love working with wood craftsman kits. 
In fact, I've got one right here that I'm planning to do uh, in the future uh, on, on the channel. I'll do a video about this, which is from uh, JL Innovations, uh, a really nice company that makes some really nice um, craftsman kits. And this is just a, a simple a little... Um, um, a simple little, little, little structure section house. And I plan to, to build this and then really, really weather it and uh, put it on my uh, Katie yard in uh, Wichita Falls. Uh, I, I like working with wood. I like the effects that I get with wood, uh, but I just haven't done a lot of scratch building with wood. So I'm really curious to hear, uh, how many of you all have maybe done some scratch building with wood and, and what your, thoughts or or what your uh, what your opinions are about scratch building with wood back to the chat one more time uh roy container man 68 said i built a basswood ho cattle trailer that's interesting roy did you do a video about that and how long ago was that i'd like to go back and, and check that out because that sounds really interesting to me um I have some some friends uh, in in Kansas City specifically who are uh, HO narrow gauge modelers, and uh, they are really really serious scratch builders of rolling stock. And we're talking about nineteenth and early twentieth century rolling stock narrow gauge in the mountains. Uh, Denver and Rio Grande Western, Rio Grande Southern, that kind of stuff. And I'm going to tell you, they they build some absolutely beautiful uh, wood rolling stock, scratch built out of uh, out of basswood, and it, it it is incredible. It's great detailed stuff. Uh, the thing today is, it seems like if you're going to do a lot of really detailed scratch building with wood, you almost need access to a laser cutter to be able to get the kind of detail that you're really looking for. Uh, unless you can find uh, commercially available detail parts. Uh, Stu Structure says you can't beat wood for looking like wood. And that's very true, uh, you know, Mark. And I think probably one of the reasons I don't scratch build with wood more than I do is because I am, am building a modern era layout. And so most of the structures that I am modeling are either concrete or steel or brick, uh, you know, you don't see a lot of modern uh, structures, industrial structures that are wood, unless they're very old ones. And so the few wood structures that I've built uh, are structures that I'm, you know, weathering to look uh, like they're quite old. Um, and so, but, but you are absolutely right. Uh, you know, I can do a lot with styrene to make it look like wood, but nothing looks like wood as much as wood does. <laughs> I mean, that, that seems logical, but, uh, uh, but. Anyway, um, let's see. Um, Trainiac, uh, or I'm sorry, not Trainiac, Train Guy 56 says, I have a couple of scratch built structures. He says, not very good. Uh, and, uh, and have scratch built a couple of cars. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And I, I think it's uh, scratch building is really rewarding because you come up with a project and you kind of design it yourself and whatever, however it comes out, you can look at it and say, you, you know, I made that, you know, from, from, you know, from beginning to, to end. And, and that is, is really, really rewarding. And, uh, that's one of the things about scratch building that, that I really enjoy. Uh, Stephen Bruni says, I've never put a structure together. I have one that I want to do, uh, but I'm so scared that I'll screw it up. Well, Stephen, I would say this. Uh, embrace the fear and jump in. Uh, what What is the worst that could happen? <laughs> you know, that's what you've got to ask yourself. The worst that can happen is, okay, I mess up a model, a ki a model kit and I buy another one. Now, if you've got a model kit that is like an extremely high dollar you know, very, very valuable kit, or somehow it has some kind of sentimental value to you, then I would say something, you know, less expensive, something smaller just to try. Again, uh, I picked up this little wood uh, structure craftsman kit from JL Innovations. Uh, and I picked this up for like, for like, I think $15 at, uh, at, at the uh, national train show, the NMRA this last summer. And, but it's a, it's a great kit. This would be a great place to start. <coughs> 
because uh, it's not overly complicated. There's not a ton of pieces, uh, and uh, but but it would get you started building. I I, I strongly recommend uh, that the best way to learn to scratch build or build you know structure kits or whatever is just to jump in and give it a try. Um, you know, start with something small, but 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 give it a try. Mm, let's see here. DIY and Road says I'm currently saving up for a 3D printer. I have experiences with 3D modeling. Job, the scratch building that way. That's something I have really wanted to do, and I, I haven't I haven't jumped in and spent the money on a 3D printer yet, mostly because. Um, I don't have a, a, a lot of skills in, I have, I have some experience with, uh, with CAD programs, but, but not a lot. And so I would be really dependent upon, um, uh, designs that, that I could get off of the internet. Uh, and if I'm going to do that it, at this point in, in my modeling, I, I can just do that through, through, uh, shape ways, but it is something I'd really like to try. I, I watch, uh, uh, again, Luke Talon, for example, and, and others uh, who are making detail parts with a 3D printer. And I think that looks really interesting. That's exciting. I would love to be able uh, to do that. Stu Structures, again, we have all, oops, I just lost it there. We have all messed up a building. Uh, that's the way we've learned. But they really are not that hard. Just take your time and think it out. That is that is such good advice right there. That is That is so true. Thank you. Um, scrolling on down here. Uh, Trenton Lee says, I have found that just remember to take your time and walk away when you're frustrated and come back to it when you're ready. And that's some good advice too. One, one of the things I do as, as you have seen over time, I always have a lot of projects going. And one of the reasons why I do that, one of the many reasons is because you know sometimes I just get I get bored with a project or I get frustrated with it or I just get stuck and I don't really know how to proceed, and so I may put it down and I may walk away for a, for a few hours and I may walk away for a few days. In some cases, I've walked away for years, <laughs> and then at some point I'll get the inspiration and come back, and figure okay here's what I want to do and uh, and and uh, and finish it up. Container Man sixty eight Roy says CAD is easy to learn. Um, yeah, I, I, and again, I, I have a little experience. It's just a matter of the time, and it's something I am going to do. Uh, I just haven't figured out exactly when I'm going to work it into my uh, into my schedule. Um, JC's Rip Track again. John says, Ron, in terms of scratch building and such, have you ever had to uh, do a building rehab? Um, well. I think the closest thing, well, yes, I'll tell you what I have done, and uh, I don't have them in here with me, or I'd show them to you. Uh, number one, like I showed you earlier, I have several structures from early on that I built with CA that I'm having to re to rework uh, and re-glue uh, with solvent cement. But I had some structures on my layout now that have actually been on multiple layouts, and some of them uh, have been... Uh, not only repurposed, but modified from one layout to another. I'll give you a few examples. If you're familiar with Walter's track side, uh, uh, track side transfer, uh, I built uh, one of those kits for my very first layout. Really, really nice warehouse kind of a kit. Uh, on my a previous layout, which was a, a, a previous version of something very similar to what I'm modeling here, uh, I literally cut it in half and use the two different sides in different places on the layout. Currently, uh, one of those halves of that trackside transfer is, is on my layout uh, in, in a place where it's going to be permanent. The other half is in a place where right now it's kind of a placeholder for another structure that I'm going to, to, uh, to scratch build later. Uh, I also had um, a, a, a cold transfer, a, a dry, a, a cold logistics plant that was made out of a new comp uh, uh, structure kit that unfortunately new comp is out of business and you, you can't get the kit anymore, which is really too bad because it was a very nice modern industrial warehouse, you know, concrete prefab concrete kind of a building. Um, I built a version of it to represent uh, 
uh, P and O cold logistics uh, on my previous layout. When I, when I built this version of my layout, I still needed P and O cold, uh, at North Yard, but because the shape of the layout and the location was different, I needed to shape it differently. So I completely dismantled and re rebuilt that structure for the, 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 the new layout. So, so yeah, I, I have done some of that. I, I wish I had some of those in here to, to, to show you. Um, but unfortunately I don't have them. I didn't think about bringing those in with me. Um, Let's talk a little bit before I run out of time. Let's talk a little bit about tools because that was one other subject that uh, I wanted to hit on tonight. I'm going to show you just a few of of my my favorite tools that I like to use for for scratch building. Uh, of course, there are a lot of things that you know you're going to have to have. You're going to have to have a, a hobby knife and a bunch of number eleven blades. Um, you know, you're 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 going to need uh, some some drill bits. Um, you know, a, a pin vise and, and some small drill bits is 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 a must. Uh, not just for 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 drilling holes because you need to stick a rod or a screw in, uh, but you know if you're cutting out doors or windows, uh, marking out the placement of a door or a window, and then using a, a pin vise and, and a small drill bit. To, uh, to drill out the, the corners and along the sides can be a big help in, in cutting out uh, in cutting out doors and windows. Years ago, I found this drill uh, and uh, not this exact model, but, but one very, very similar to this is actually available at Amazon. And if you go to my Amazon page, which there's a, a link to in the description down below, not the pick of the week, but my actual Amazon page, uh, under the tool section, you'll see one of these. And, and what this is, is this is a, 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 a twist drill. And if you can, t if I hold it right here, literally and push down on it, it, it spins the drill. So if I want to drill, I don't have a bit in it right now, but if I want to drill a hole, rather than having to turn it and turn it and turn it, turn it, I here just like this and 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 drill a hole very handy really really speeds up that that work and so that was a, that was a great buy that i just happened to pick up a long time ago and i used it a, a ton um of course you know tweezers are very handy for for holding small parts or holding things together and i have a variety of tweezers this was the first set i ever bought uh they are a little big and a little cumbersome so i also have picked up some smaller tweezers like these uh for holding very small parts uh something that is absolutely once i had some i realized that was absolutely a godsend and that are are these uh, self-closing tweezers that you push to open and then they work like a clamp uh, and they will hold the piece. You can hold material with these whenever you're working on it, or you can hold pieces together while the while glue is drying. Um, those are are fantastic. Uh, dental picks. Uh, if you're doing scratch building, at some point you're going to want to do some scribing to to add details uh, to to your models. And so uh, you know these dental picks are are fantastic. Are fantastic for that. Um, one more tool that I know you've seen me talk about. In fact, I did a review of this very early in my channel, but in my opinion, this is like the one tool that maybe is not, uh, your, your everyday tool that you see, but I think is an absolute must. If you're wanting to do some really serious structure building of any kind, kits, scratch building, kit bashing, whatever. And that is a, a touch and flow applicator. Uh, literally what this is, is a hollow glass tube and it's got what's basically a blunt hypodermic needle on the end of it. Um, if you, depending on how you buy it, uh, if you buy it in a kit, it actually comes with this little bottle, which is used for filling it. It fits right on the end. And what you do is you fill this up with, uh, with solvent, uh, the, the solvents that we talked about before. And then whenever you go to glue a, a joint, uh, you know, if you've ever tried spread solvent with a brush or e even a micro brush, you know, you can really make a mess. And, and sometimes you have to glue from the, from the outside surface of, of your structure and you can make a mess out of it doing it with a brush, but with a touch and flow applicator. Now this is empty, but with this literally uh, I can uh, take this when it's filled and just touch the joint and pull this along the joint and capillary action will pull a small amount of the solvent out 
and into the joint and through the joint through capillary action. And when you're finished, uh, if you're very careful with this, uh, you almost can't see where the glue has touched the model at all. Really does a nice job uh, of applying glue, uh, you know, to, to small joints like that without, uh, without making a mess. Uh, I highly, highly recommend these. Again, if you're looking for one, uh, if you go to my uh, my Amazon page uh, down below uh, under, I believe you'll find it under tools or you may find it under adhesives, but I've, I've got it on that page and uh, I highly recommend them. Now, somebody, and I'm trying to remember who it was, one of my subscribers just recently told me that they tried to use it for the first time and they broke the glass tube. Uh, now I'm not sure how that happened exactly. Uh, I've been using mine for several years and I've never had that problem, but you do need to be aware that that it is a glass tube and it, it, it certainly can break. It certainly, uh, can be, can be very delicate. Okay. We're down to just, uh, a few minutes left. So I'm going to go back to chat one more time and just see if we have any more questions or comments or, uh, ideas that, that, that you would share. Um, Let's see here. Scrolling back up just a little bit. John at JC's Rip Track says he has a touch and flow applicator, uh, but not the bottle uh, to work as a siphon. And I'll tell you, if you don't get the, the one that comes with a bottle, um, you can do the same thing with, the, with little ear syringes. You just put the, the ear syringe onto the end of the, the glass tube. Uh, you put it down into your, your uh, cement and squeeze it, let it pull the the solvent up into the tool and then uh, and then take it off and you've got it loaded and then whenever you want to empty it you do the same thing you just stick it back on there put it in the bottle squeeze it to push the uh, the extra solvent cement out and uh, works really really good the ear syringe works just as well just as well as the bottle um let's see here the moderator tonight thank you guys appreciate uh, appreciate all your help I, I think eric ducked out a few minutes ago and uh, i missed the opportunity but good night eric um <laughs> he says steve brown is on smackdown duty okay steve the burden's on you man the burden's on you keep everybody in line um steve groft says i learned a lot from people like ron uh, we can always learn more no matter how much uh, we already know. That's very true. And uh, I'm, I'm always watching and reading, trying to learn new stuff myself. So we never, we never stop that. Um, and without scrolling way up, I'm not seeing too much else in the way of questions or comments. So I'm going to turn the camera back up here so you can see my ugly mug again. And, um, just let you know, I, I really appreciate y'all coming into the live stream this evening. Uh, this is a, a topic scratch building that was one that's kind of, kind of near and dear to my heart. Uh, I really, really enjoy it. Uh, it's one of my favorite parts of the hobby. I don't get time to do it as much as I would like. Um, but, uh, I'm enjoying doing some of the scratch builds that I'm doing victory blue that I'm working on right now. And again, hopefully, hopefully, uh, you'll see part two of that series up tomorrow. Uh, as we continue uh, through that scratch build, and I'm excited about getting it on the layout. Uh, but it, it, again, it's very rewarding scratch building uh, and uh, and kit bashing because you get to uh, experience and and have an outlet for some um, some of your own creativity. Uh, you know, you could that you've built and say, yeah, I, I built that. But if you kit bash that kill kit, or if you scratch build something, you can say, you know, th that I didn't just build that, but I imagined it. I'm, you know, I designed it. I put it together. It is, it is all, all mine. Um, checking back one more time. Uh, Steve Bruni says, will you oops, moves? It moves so fast. Where did I find here? Will you be doing another uh, custom painted locomotive anytime soon? Uh, Steven, uh, I, I don't have a, a custom locomotive project in the works right now. Uh, I do have another custom locomotive that I want to do. 
uh, but I need decals for it. And it's not a, it, it's a short line. It's not a common short line. And to my knowledge, there aren't any decals out there yet. And I just haven't commissioned them yet. Uh, so I will be doing one for the road is the Wichita Tillman and Jackson. I've thought about doing a second locomotive, uh, for the Fort Worth and Western. And that might be something that I do, uh, somewhere down the line, but, uh, I don't have specific plans for it yet. I would like to do it. The, the only problem with it is there is an in scale to really trick out and super detail locomotive takes a ton of time. Uh, and, um, so I just haven't quite invested that time, but, but I haven't, I haven't ruled that out by, uh, by any means. Let's see. I think there was another question or two. I was going to try to catch here. Um, bah, 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 bah. Sorry. The name is Groft brother installations and repair. We are on Facebook. Oh, okay. Groth, Groth Brothers uh, Installations and Repair. Okay, I think that was relating to a comment that I missed up before. So, all right. Well, again, I want to say thank you to all of you for, for coming in and joining me for your comments and your questions. I'm sorry for the ones that I, that I missed and didn't get to tonight. Uh, but, uh, as I have an opportunity, I'll, I'll try to answer some of those uh, really pertinent questions in the comments section down below. Uh, after the video uh, is, is up for replay. So you might check back uh, as uh, I'm, I might be uh, trying to answer some of those questions uh, down there and uh, be glad to try to, uh, to, to help you out in any way that I can that way. Thank you again so much uh, for coming. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, if you're watching on the replay, uh, you're going to find a link to some more uh, scratch building videos in a, in a card right here. Uh, and you can check those out uh, down the road. And also hope you'll take a look at the description down below. Uh, take a look at my Amazon pick of the week. I got something down there that I think you'll really like uh, as it relates to this subject. And also be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you more great model railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. Good night, everybody. <laughs>